Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, August 15th, 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time, 2022. We have some space weather incoming. A filament ejected from the sun, earth-facing. But the big story, monsoon storms going to ramp back up this week with heavy rain threat, and that means more flash flooding. Keep calm. It's boom time. Monsoon surge is back. Flood threat with evening storms. This is for Colorado. And here are your watches and warnings through the center of the state. The future cast, heavy rain up in Greeley, Limon and Akron. Denver might get hit as well. So heads up, flood, flood watch 2 p.m. through midnight. And the entire Four Corners region will go through the forecast is under flood watch and threat for the next week. Here we have a tornado warning just issued in Texas. If you shop at Walmart, you Sorry about that commercial. Here we have some footage from the Phoenix area. Looks a little wet down there. There is no audio. But clearly we can see some flooding there from the monsoonal activity. We also uh, flooding topple trees, power poles, and we're pushed to the ground. The damage from the storm stretches across the valley. Like I said, a tornado warning now just issued in Texas. So heads up. Here is some more uh, footage. Our big story tonight, this intense monsoon. It's been another storm-filled weekend across the state. Take a look at this video. Powerful winds blowing trees around and hard rain pouring down in Chandler. This video sent in to us from 12 News weather watcher Garrett Boykin. And listen to this. This is rain and thunder in Gilbert. Thank you to Max Delaney for this video of the monsoon in action. All of this rain coming down near Higley and Queen Creek Road. And now to Ahwatukee, where things are more than just a little... Ahwatukee, fluky. Yeah, so go check it out. Uh, the the mon All these links will be below. The monsoon is in full force. And even in Colorado, 15 people rescued. In Colorado, as mudslides shut down mountain passes, these are four-wheelers that got stuck, well, in a pinch here. You could be stuck in the backcountry for a long period of time if you get cut off from the main roads. Eight cars and 15 occupants were stranded on Saturday after being caught in a major mudslide at the Ingram Falls area of Black Bear Pass, according to San Miguel Sheriff's Office. So check the weather before you go out into the backcountry. And it's devastating. Rockford Farmer sees severe crop damage due to hailstorm. Rockford, Washington. Last week, the city of Liberty Lake saw golf ball-sized hail through the region. This unusual hailstorm left severe damage to homes, properties, and vehicles. Located 15 miles outside of Spokane Valley, the hailstorm hail caused significant crop damage for wheat farmers. It's causing a delay to their normal harvesting schedule as well. So, bad news for the wheat farmers. Bad news for the watermelon farmers in South Kakalagi. Sumter farmers lose their entire crop of beloved Bradford watermelons. And this is due to too much rain, excessive rain in the, in the southeast. Um, in fact... They had 12 to 14 days of rain, and that's what did it. The loss is over 20 grand, and those people who love those watermelons, well, won't be getting any this year. Now, first alert, weather, hail and damaging winds, isolated tornadoes possible. And this is in North Carolina, so heads up there. We'll go over the full forecast in just a minute. Heat and monsoonal conditions throughout the week. Dangerous heat will build across portions of the West through this week, where new daily record highs are potentially forecast for the valleys here. Monsoonal showers and thunderstorms may result in flash flooding and debris flows for portions of the southwest, especially later in the week for northern New Mexico. Friday, specifically, we'll get to that. And the Four Corners in general throughout the, the Rockies into the midweek, it's looking like a very wet pattern. Flood watches and warnings currently in green, so check it out. This is a stalled tropical system moving into Mexico as we speak, so it could be some flood warnings and watches happening down there in southern Texas, as well as in Appalachia here in southern West Virginia and Western Virginia. So that's what's going on across the country. Now here's the GFS model where we can see uh, there is the severe weather threat, that tropical system in Texas. We could also see some pop-up storms in North and South Dakota, as well as up here just east of Denver, and also looking like North Carolina. So just like they said. And that is just for the next 18 hours. That's the newest model. So Italy's Lake Garda shrinking to near historic lows amid drought, and they're going to blame it on you there. There we see some ancient structure there. 
pretty fantastic. Now, this is because water is being diverted into rivers to aid farmers and not into the lake. It really has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the drought and the fact that they're misappropriating the water. But good news, there is up to 150 millimeters of precipitation forecast through the end of August. Specifically for that region, that lake is right up here on the edge of the Alps. And so it looks like a reprieve for the drought in Italy through August. Good news. <laughs> now, seismic update. We've had a moderate uptick in earthquakes worldwide. Some activity north of Iceland here, near Svalbard, and big rumblers in the Kermadec and the Loyalty Islands over six magnitude in the last 24 hours. So, worldwide volcano news update. A couple things of note here. We've got some big blasts and puffers, including Chevalouche in Kamchatka, glowing lava dome there. Pretty spectacular. Activity at the volcano remains intense, and the pulse of magma that has been feeding the active domes continues. Zabin Kaya puffing to 24,000, and Reventador in Ecuador. Volcanian activity continues from the summit crater, making for some fantastic photography. Kilauea itself back on the list after we were one of the first people to show the reactivation of the eruption there. In the caldera, effusive eruption is continuing at fluctuating intensity. And here we are live. In Iceland, at the new spatter cone and the new eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And you can see continuous lava flows coming out and beautiful shots of spattering lava as the spatter cone grows higher. And that is the latest update from Iceland, space weather news update. Here you can see the activity been increasing over the last 12 hours or so today, almost getting up into M range there it appears. Let's take a closer look before we dive deeper. Oh, I just clicked on it. I'm not getting the... There it is. Yeah, actually, we did get up into M range here. M1.0. So that is new. And that means we have a, quite an active sun. As we're looking to get in a geomagnetic storm by uh, August 17th, there's a couple things we need to talk about, including a solar filament located near AR3076 that erupted, causing a slight halo coronal mass ejection, which means it's headed towards Earth. And this will be combining with this coronal hole stream, which will be arriving in a few days as well. So... The powers that be already have us uh, in geomagnetic storm early August 17th, so August 18th will be more of a day of concern. As we're looking here at the ISWA model from NASA, and it's showing almost a direct hit of Earth late on the 17th through the 18th. But this morning, uh, the WSA Enlil Solar Wind Prediction came out, and we'll just run that through for you. So we're going to see the filament detach here. And on their model, it's much more of a glancing blow. Right there. As you, albeit, you can see there's going to be quite a spike here, maybe, in plasma density. That's on the 19th. So, And if there is, in fact, a spike on the 19th, that will coincide with the coronal hole that... Uh, we are worried about these coupling together. A one-two punch is what we said over at Magnetic Reversal News last night. And we're still expecting that, and it's looking to line up to be a one-two punch. Even if it is just a glancing blow, as uh, the WSA Enlil is showing here, there will still be a spike in plasma at the same time that that coronal hole stream will be here. So, could be interesting. Buckle up. Okay, no, let's, before we finish, let's go back and talk about some of the effects. This is not going to be a grid-ending type of scenario. It's a great test for our waning magnetosphere where there may be some perturbations to communications, to internet, to satellites, and we may see some um, electrical fires perhaps. So we're going to keep a close eye on it and we'll report back on you what did occur and you can be watching too. So if you see strange events on the 18th and 19th occurring or even late on the 17th with your internet, with your communications, you probably know it's the sun. Now, toxic pollution in the Great Lakes remains a colossal problem. What else is a colossal problem is it says this piece expresses the views of the author. So they're claiming that this is editorial as if it's not true. <laughs> the Great Lakes have been some of the most polluted lakes on Earth uh, for quite some time. And we were just a dumping toxic waste into waterways back in the 60s and 70s. Now, Great Lakes toxic contaminants, well, they contain 
organochloride pesticide, and many other disgusting things. Since the 1990s, studies have identified toxic pollutants including PCBs, DDT, chlordane in and around the Great Lakes, as well as lead, copper, arsenic, and others. Now, PCBs are forever chemicals created by multinational corporations like Monsanto that have polluted the planet forever. They have no residence time. They will never go away. They cause cancer. They build up in fish, in their fat. And well, this is the world we have to live in, and it's disgusting. Let's talk a little fa uh, fairy tale science. Is dark matter, matter real? They're still hanging on to this. Now, the fortunate thing is the James Webb Space Telescope just got launched, and well, it's putting some of these physicists and astrophysicists' panties in quite a bunch. Despite recent advances in astrophysics and astronomy and trillions of dollars being dumped into the question of dark matter, scientists still don't understand how galaxies can exist. And with the James Webb Space Telescope, it's now showing that the Big Bang didn't happen. And that's putting, well, 99% of scientists into a state of mental despair. And I can prove it. I'll quote one of them. Right now I find myself lying awake at 3 in the morning, says Allison Kirkpatrick, an astronomer at the University of Kansas in Lawrence, and wondering if everything I've done is wrong. Well... I can assure you, it has been. Now, something that's not wrong is the 33rd Annual Crestone Energy Fair, August 27th to the 28th, 2022, in Crestone, Colorado. Reclaim self, village, and nature. We're going to have natural building, workshops, off-grid lifestyle, education, energy systems, gardening, rights of nature, health and freedom, land stewardship. There'll be a pancake breakfast, and there's plenty of family fun for kids. There's a free community kitchen, so, and it's free. Did I say that? So free food, free community, free education. Wow, that sounds awesome. CrestoneEnergyFair.org or email CrestoneEnergyFair at gmail.com. And that's a boom to knowledge. I'll see you at the Crestone Energy Fair, I hope. And we just want a big shout out to our new Patreons, our one-time donors, and the heroes that share this video. We love you. And that's a boom.